Alright, hey, what's up you guys? Gavin here. Today we have a interesting band, um, The Smiths. Uh, this is a very much, a kind of an older band, um, amongst like maybe the 70s, 60s type stuff. Um, a lot of, uh, a lot of 80s movies reference this band because uh, they're very mel melancholy and uh, amongst that emo genre that like nowadays people would be like, oh, Fall Out Boy or uh, My Chemical Romance. That that was the Smiths were the 80s uh, kids, MCR and uh, Fall Out Boy and all that jazz. So it's pretty cool, you know, taking it back, back in time. We get to look at some stuff. Uh, the first song we're looking at today is in fact a great one uh it's called i think it's the the queen is dead i think yeah the title track is the first song which i'm not totally against uh i think it, i think it's fine i think uh preferably my uh records um which by the way my new EP is out, Liquid Heaven. Um, I'll leave a link in the description where you can find that and check it out. Uh, it's a garage inspired punk music. Um, it's very gritty and fresh, you know, out of the bedroom type music. Uh, if you like that type of music, you know, hit me up or I guess check out the website. Um, if you are a band or a small band, you want me to do a review of your band, and or just check out your music, leave a comment in the comment section. I love looking up new artists, especially up and coming. Great stuff. Alright. So it's very like... So back to The Smiths. Um, the Smiths... My first impressions of The Smiths... Uh, let me see, when did I first hear them? Actually, I didn't hear them. I, uh, I read a book and... The song that I... Well, actually, it was a movie, too. There's a couple things. There was a book, and then there was a movie. And, uh... I uh, kind of ventured off into my own. Um, I didn't really listen to this album first off. Um, I listened to... I think, uh, something with the, with the word bomb in it. Uh, if you know what it is, leave a comment, and, uh, you can help me out and the audience out. Uh figure that out. But anyways, so I had heard the band um, from a number of places, references and stuff. I think really the first one was this movie called 500 Days of Summer. Um, it's a good movie. Uh, maybe I'll do a review. If you want me to do a review, tell me. And uh, I'll see about doing one. But anyways, uh, the first song that they m referenced was uh, There Is a Light That Never Goes Out. And uh, it was like a a brief moment between the two main characters in the movie and on an elevator and he was listening to it and she overheard it and uh, she was kind of like, hey, I know that song. Um, so, let's, I don't know, I guess she just kind of mentioned it and he was like, wow, that's pretty awesome. I've never really met anyone who listens to uh, the Smiths. Uh, it kind of ventures off into that. But anyways, so the song the Queen is dead. I'm gonna look up some lyrics. Uh, as I look that up, I'm gonna continue. Um, my first impression was that I really liked them. They were like the singer. Okay, so a lot of the music that I listen to is uh, not only good, personally to me, I think it's good, but also I like to take notes from some of the stuff that they do. Uh, if they sing a certain way that's, you know, that could improve my singing, I will probably listen to them more often because they have a really good singing style. Um, I'll discuss more about that later on in the video, but, uh, yeah, so, my first impression was, wow, this guy really can sing, and, uh, the lyrics at the time were very, um, they were about love, and, uh, I guess, you know, you don't really ever, I guess there is a light that never goes out, kind of references the fact that um, there's some people in this world that you just, you can't stop loving. Or a passion. I guess you could look at it at both ways. Uh, anyways. Alright. 
Alright, so, pulling up the lyrics right now. Let's see. Um, the second song, I don't, okay, so, ooh, ooh, that was not good. My bad. Um, the second song, I, it's between either Asleep or, or, um, Please, 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 let me get what I want. Those are, those are the two songs that I kind of uh, got introduced to when I was uh, venturing into the Smiths. Um, I'm gonna just base it off of a sleep, just so I can kind of, I have more information about where I got that song from. So the song came from this book called The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Um, it's about this young boy who is kind of going into high school for the first time and uh, he's coming into the school with a lot of baggage and uh, it's told in the in the point of view of like a unanimous pen pal which is pretty interesting to, in my opinion like you read it as if he wrote it you're this person named Charlie <clears throat> and he's you know dear Charlie Every chapter is kind of like, Dear Charlie, this is how it went, blah, 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 Dear Charlie, blah, 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 blah. And uh, it's such a well-executed book in that manner. Like, I guess there are a lot of books that could probably be like that. Um, if you have a suggestion that is like that, leave it in the comment section. I would love to hear about it because, man, books like that are such, such interesting details and, like, such a weird, not weird per se, but such a... Uh, perspective of a, it's a very perspective style and I really appreciate it but yeah so in this one part he's talking about how he's listening to this song called asleep by the Smiths and that's pretty much where I got it from uh, I think in the movie he mentions these books that uh, his uh, teacher someone references some books that he should like check out all right so it starts off Oh, take me back to the to dear old Blighty. Put me on the train for London Town. Take me anywhere. Drop me anywhere. Liverpool, Leeds, or Birmingham. But I don't care. I should like to see. I don't bless them. Farewell to this lands. Cheerless marches. Hemmed in like a boar between arches. Her very loudness with her head in a sling. I'm truly sorry, but it sounds like a wonderful thing. I say, Charles, don't you ever crave to appear on the front of the Daily Mail, dressed in your mother's bridal veil. And so I checked all the registered historical facts, and I was shocked into shame to discover how I'm the 18th pale descendant of some old queen or other. Right, I'm going to stop right there so we can kind of get a briefing. Um, I guess he, it's not very, uh, pretty satisfied with where he's at and kind of feels like he should move and uh, you know he it feels like a very intimate conversation between him and his inner self uh, especially the part where it says uh, don't you ever crave to appear on the front of the daily dressed in your mother's bridal veil Pharaoh to this land's cheerless marches hemmed in like a boar between arches. So this is how he feels, and then this is what his, you know, basically like, okay, I'm so bored of my surroundings. And, you know, he's in, he's thinking this to himself, and his subconscious is like, well, don't do this. Don't go out of your way to be famous or something. And it's an interesting, it's one of the many things that the Smiths kind of do really well is that their lyrics are very very unique um it feels very handwritten and uh, uh i guess english core uh united kingdom uh you know brought up which i i can't think of anyone off the top of my head at the moment that's lyrics kind of do that um i think especially being i don't know if he is even britain or british but uh, it very it feels very royal, and uh, what is it? No, yeah, I'm like mon monarch. It's what comes to mind when I read these lyrics. So it's pretty.
pretty interesting. Uh, the next song we're gonna look at uh, is Frankly Mr. Shankly. I feel like the sh the I'm about to call them the shins, the Smiths take the listener to a whole other place. It feels very dreamy, you know. I feel like I'm not in my house. I feel like I'm in a in a club or something, and someone's serenading me, like a like a very small club, and I'm watching someone, you know, an open mic night. Do really well. Uh, I'm drinking coffee here. Something. Yeah, they set the they set the the mood very well. It, for you know, you feel like you need to escape, or uh, you feel like you don't really. Don't know what to do with yourself. I would suggest listening to the Smiths. I think they do a great job of uh, taking the feelings, especially if you're one of the people that you know doesn't really know how to describe their feelings. You know, you try to be happy in this world. You try your so hardest, and you you just kind of want to know that you're not alone. You know, like there's people out there who understand what it's like to. Maybe feel down, even though everyone around you is so positive, and may feel like everyone around you has, you know, everything figured out. It's nice to listen to to music that does a really great job of making you feel like one things are gonna be okay. You know, one day you'll be able to like go places when you want to, and uh, maybe. I know you meet someone you really love. I don't know, the Smiths? The Smiths got it down. Alright. So, back to what I was saying. Frankly, Mr. Shankly, this position I've held, it pays my way, and it corrodes my soul. I want to leave, you will not miss me. I want to go down in musical history. Frankly, Mr. Shankly, I'm a sickening wreck. I've got the 21st century breathing down my neck. I must move fast. You understand me. I want to go down in celluloid, celluloid history, Mr. Shankly. Fame, fame, fatal frame. It can play hideous tricks on the brain. But still, I'd rather be famous than righteous or holy any day, any day, any day. But sometimes I'd feel more fulfilled, making Christmas cards with mentally ill. I want to live and I want to love. I want to catch something that I might be ashamed of. Frankly, Mr. Shankly. Alright, we're gonna stop right there. And it's very clear that this man is just... He's so put on by the idea that he really wants to make it. I mean, it's clear. It's very clear. It's clear as day. You know, I want to go down in musical history. And like in uh, the movie, or I guess the book, Perks of Being a Wallflower, how it's in a, in a, in a point of view of, of, an in, of someone you know, someone you can confide in. You know, they've given this, this power to us that you are the person I'm going to confide in. I mean, Frankly, Mr. Shankly and Charlie seems like one and the same person. And he's kind of questioning it, like, you know, I want to be, I want to be famous. I want to make it in this in the musical world. I want to do what I want, but maybe, maybe that's not how it's supposed to be. Maybe I'd be for, more fulfilled making Christmas cards with the mentally ill. And, uh, I, 
I love this song so much. This, these lyrics especially, are are something, something to take note of. Especially if you are an artist, not a struggling artist. Struggling artists, I feel like they have a determination. Like they're gonna get through it. They know what they're gonna do. You know. Uh, I think they're more afraid that they're not gonna make it rather than the fact that they don't know if this is even like something they want to do. I feel like with there's some musicians out there that they have so much not so much writing on being a musician but they they hear about it so much that you know they keep thinking about how you know they're doing well and they should continue to do what they do but it just sparks this idea that like you know maybe maybe this isn't actually what I want maybe and it sucks when like people who were actually like say Kurt Cobain for instance you know he, he didn't want to be a musician he wanted to just play at clubs and be some a, a, jan a janitor I feel like some musicians have that have that idea that like you know they do so well and they they're good at what they do and you know dedicating them time their time and their money into to their dreams isn't going to be a bad thing and it's going to yield results but at the end of the day they're they're just stuck thinking like okay well I'm so good at what I do like it just kind of freaks people out when things kind of fall into place so easily it kind of it feels really like a dream and people like Nightmare on Elm Street you know when you get stuck into a dream and you can't wake up and this creepy burnt man it has his hands around your neck you can't help but freak out and you know just want to leave the dream because it's just it feels so real if you if you wake up like it'll go away it's the other way around for people who like have dreams that they that they put so much time and effort and they focus on it and they see that it's actually going somewhere and it's just I don't know it can be kind of freaky like when you see a magic trick for the first time or you facing your fears for the first time or you know landing a trick or jumping out of an airplane it's it's a very new experience and it, a lot of new experiences they always talk about how new experiences for people can be a good thing and a bad thing and sometimes a little bit of both and it's just in turn it makes a person you know they have they grow character and they you know become a better person and, and it always turns out good but in the in the beginning stages of it it, it just it feels like a lot. Well, that that was a lot to talk about. Um, I'm gonna talk about the next song, which is "I Know It's Over." Oh no! Uh, hold on, one sec. All right, so. It starts off with, oh mother, I can feel the soil falling over my head, and as I climb into an empty bed, oh well, enough said. I know it's over, still I cling, I don't know where else I can go, oh. Oh mother, I can feel the soil falling over my head. See, the sea wants to take me, the knife wants to slip me, do you think you can help me? Sad veiled bride, please be happy, handsome groom, give her room. Loud, loudish lover, treat her kindly, though she needs you, more than she loves you. I know it's over, I still I cling, I don't know where else I can go, over and over and over and over. Alright, so, first off the bat, uh, I, whew, getting close, um, I'm not really sure exactly what is trying to be communicated to the song. It's a very pretty song, and uh, I kind of, kind of feel like, 
By the way, this is my favorite song off the track. Um, it's a really pretty song, and uh, this whole album is really good. I'm gonna give the the whole rating in just a second here, but uh, I guess it kind of feels really sad. Uh, I feel like he's he's suffering, and uh, you know he has this love, but. See, the sea wants to take me, the knife wants to slip me, do you think you can help me? You know, he wants help, he needs it, he's suffering. He has all this love, but it's just a lot. Alright, so, the next thing we're going to talk about is the band similarities. Now, to be honest, I feel like the Smiths is such a really unique band. I honestly can't really think of the top of my head who they remind me of. And mostly it's because of the singer. Uh, the way he sings is just so unique and so outstanding that it's really hard to pinpoint what other group sings like this or does something like this. Um, I don't really know. Uh, I don't have a really good answer for band simulators, but if you guys do, if you guys have some bands that you think sound exactly like the Smiths, or kind of like the Smiths, or just, you know, remind you of the Smiths, leave in the comments section. Love to know. Um, last but not least, singing and screaming styles, I kind of talked about this a second ago, but uh, the singer has a really unique voice, and it's something that just, like I said, it's really outstanding and it can't really be mimicked real well unless you really try to sound like him. So, I don't know, uh, it's almost very close to opera. It's, uh, opera and, I want to say folk, but that might be wrong, uh, but that's as best as I can describe it. Anyway, um, I give this album a four and a half, four and a half, four point five, because I can already tell that I don't even know why I'm attached to it already, and I haven't listened to it all the way through. Uh, it's probably like another one of those albums that it's like the second time I've listened to it. But anyways, four out of four point five out of five. This album is great. I recommend it. Uh, it's a good. Uh, album to listen to on a rainy day and a cloudy day or just on a day that you feel like you're having like a rough day I think this would be great um, also uh, give this video a big thumbs up don't for don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section about whatever if you got suggestions for me to do uh, yeah and uh, don't forget to subscribe peace